Hello folks, Justin here. I'm going to show you my parade of vacuums, vintage vacuums. I'm going to turn each of them on, clean up some mess, and then run through each of the modifications I've made on these machines. So, let's start with the dust, or the dirt. This is kitchen dirt. <laughs> my partner and I cook all the time in our kitchen. So this is uh, flour, uh, steel cut oats, peanuts. I'm going to put some on the tile here. I just laid some tile on this carpet because I have tile and hardwood floors, especially downstairs, mostly hardwood. So um, I wanted to show both types of cleaning. Uh, and I've actually also got, <laughs> yes, a car mat. I'm going to clean up the car mat as well because that's what I do. Right? This is a video of cleaning day-to-day real cleaning with vintage machines. Let's start with the oldest and then go to the newest. They're lined up by age. This is an old Kirby. I'm going to turn it on, let you listen to it, and clean up this uh, kitchen dirt on this tile here. Let's go. <laughs> Peanuts and some of the steel cut oats are dropping out of the floor nozzle on this old Kirby. And I will get to why a little bit later. Well let's keep let's keep moving down the line and keep cleaning. Next up is a Hoover Reportable. Look at this guy, right? Handle and everything is included. I gotta just pop it open and get the hose out for you. Pull the hose out. Usually I would lay it down and do this, but I'm trying to do this on the camera. All right. Now, I've got no attachment. Forgot the attachment. Got to open it back up. Can you tell I'm doing this on the fly? <laughs> All right. Close the top again. And I'm going to clean the tile again. Um, actually, you know what? Let me just clean the car mat. Got the car mat here. Might as well just show it to you. Now let's try to clean some of what the Kirby left behind. Yeah. Let's show that. Here goes the Hoover. Cleaned up my car mat pretty well. Okay. Next up, a newer Kirby. This is, I call this the beast. This thing, I'll get to details, but woo, get a bicep workout with this thing. Okay. This has got the carpet uh, brush roll on it, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean up this supposed kitchen mess that maybe, you know, traipsed over into the living room. Here we go. Do the same thing as what the new Kirby tradition just did. This is a Super J. Let's go ahead and clean up this mess. Check 
couple more passes. Maybe the observant person saw that. Um, I had some residue right here I could see, and I had to pass, pass over that a couple more times. Now, I'm going to do the little looks twice because it is so simple to switch to hard surface. There we go. I switched to hard surface from the carpet. Oh, yeah. And if I need to temporarily switch to a carpet again, some people might be able to tell what I actually use most on a daily basis. That's this Electrolux Super J. I'll get back to it in a moment and why I use it. But let me let me circle back on the the beauty. I call the old Kirby the beauty. It is a beautiful machine. It is also light. This is an aluminum upright that's light. Now, I'm not in the canister versus upright machines. You can see, you know, that debate that goes on forever. The uprights are better, or the canisters are better. Yeah, I don't care. I use all these machines. But I use this old Kirby upright the least. Uh, for the YouTube curious, if you want to know exactly how old this machine is, maybe you can see this stamp. Um, look how great, great condition that stamp is in. It's a Model 561. And I've been told that this is from the 50s. 1950s, man oh man. Now some, some smart YouTubers will probably know the exact date. Um, this machine was made in Cincinnati, Ohio, as was the Tradition Kirby. The Hoover was made in America as well. It was uh, North Canton, Ohio. And the Electrolux over here, actually, I've forgotten where Electrolux is made. Uh, does anyone know? I have to look at the, the stamp. Electrolux is Connecticut. Yes. Old Greenwich, Connecticut, says the stamp. Yes, yeah, so these are all American made cars back in the day. No, this is, no imports here. That's one reason I got them. But uh, yeah, I don't really use the beautiful Kirby anymore because of the reason that you saw it left behind usually large, heavy things. It leaves that behind. Now, some people would say that's because you're not using the carpet floor attachment. Well, they have a point. There's been some tests. There's some smart uh, YouTubers who test things. I'm a big fan of VAC Labs on YouTube. The hose drops the airflow on, on these machines. Any machine with a hose is going to have a drop in airflow. Um, so I was using the hose as a surface attachment. And, you know, it would perform better if it was on the carpet unit. Um, I also want to point out that it does, uh, th this Kirby also has its original shakeout bag. Actually, this bag is the shakeout bag that has the, the paddle, the um, scraper paddle, internal scraper paddle. So you put your hand inside here, and it was a little, ooh, and you scrape down the dust. I've used this. I've actually used this. I used this machine for several years. You, you wash the bag. It's a cloth bag. Uh, it's a shakeout bag. And um, I'm just pointing that out because there's, I didn't modify this machine to make it take HEPA. So there shouldn't be a loss in airflow to a modification like that. The only modification I did make to this machine was I switched it to a uh, plastic fan. It originally had a metal fan. And you know, when I was using this more on a daily basis, I didn't want a metal fan because uh, there's a potential for it to ingest something like you know, a screw or something, and uh, that would just be the end of the machine. By the way, look at this attachment here. This is wonderful. This is a metal hose attachment. Metal on metal. You really don't see that very often. That's actually one reason why I like the Electrolux, because the Electrolux look at all that metal. The entire Holes is metal. All of this metal. 
aluminum, not that heavy. This mating piece is basically covered in an aluminum. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing here. This this mating piece is, is uh, a plastic, but it's covered in metal. So, uh, I'm hard on machines, and I like metal. That's why I probably think this is the beauty. But again, I don't use it very much. But I do, I do want to point out one thing that's very interesting, in it, and maybe it will help other people that want to use these older machines. These hard surface, these hard surface nozzles are really harsh on floors. Let me demonstrate. Uh, if you have a hardwood floor, like I have my entire, entire downstairs is, oh, did you see that dust come out? My entire downstairs is hardwood, and I have some tile. Listen to what the, the surface nozzle does. That scraping noise you don't want to hear. Now some people will say, oh, you don't have the, the bristles lowered. Yes, actually, I do have the bristles lowered. See that? That's the bristles retracted. This is the bristles lowered. Now you could sit here and try to get the perfect angle with the bristles. No one's got time for that. Scraping noises like that, don't want to hear on hardwood and tile. Maybe okay on vinyl. Definitely don't want to hear that. So, a lot of people in forums and such have said, well, use these furniture felt pads. You know, and I did that. I tried that. You, you stick the furniture felt pads on these hard surface nozzles, and then they fall off. Now, that's what happened. They, they kept on falling off. Forget it. This is ingenious. I read this in Kirby's manual for the tradition, actually. This manual had the, the, this recommendation. You put the dust. This is the duster, floor duster attachment that I had on, and it mates to the hard surface floor nozzle, or, or floor uh, attachment. It has these little ridges here, and then it has the metal clips there, and you just snap it in. Just snaps in. It's secure. That is not going anywhere. Oh, well, if I snap it in properly. Let me see. Did I do something wrong? It was <laughs> it was in there before, and now I can't get it in there. Now is it in there? Yes. Okay. When you attach it right, it will work. So look at that. Now you basically have a felt pad, and that's what this is. And you don't have to worry about, you know, gluing these furniture pads and all that kind of stuff. Now listen to the tile. Yes. Nice and soft. That's what you want to hear. No scratching noises. So that's the recommendation. Um, again, it was, it was kind of buried in, deep in the traditions manual. And so I was like, okay, let me try this. And I like it. All right, next, we're going to move on. Uh, that's really the only modifications I made to, to the old Kirby, by the way. I'm going to go through each of the modifications. It was that floor attachment thing. Not really a modification, but um, a recommendation. And the fan. I changed out the fan on that because I was using it as a daily. I did basic maintenance. I changed out the brushes. Basic, you know, maintenance on this machine. That's it. Change of brushes. I didn't even really need to change the fan. And you've got a working machine. Uh, I did not modify this to be HEPA. So, that's one point to consider. Let's move on to the Hoover Portable. All right, now, it's got wheels. For the curious, this is model 2120. I'm not gonna zoom it into because it's so faint, you're not gonna be able to see that. Model 2120 has its wheels, so you can actually roll this around on a hard surface or carpet. Um, but I made many, many modifications to this. Uh, the reason is, it has a lot of weaknesses. The biggest weakness is this hose. This hose is how you pull the machine. Look at that. So, you know, after years and years of pulling, I think smart people on YouTube may know that the 2120 is from the 60s. That's what I've, I've been told, it's from the 60s. Pulling this hose for, what? 60 years, um, the seams 
started to leak and I could actually hold it and feel the air leaking through that. So I had to seal these seams on this hose. In addition, it's a little bit different. Um, the bags are no longer made. So this bag here is actually from a Simplicity, a, a Reeker, Reeker, if I'm pronouncing that right. And what I do is I take their cloth bags, uh, and their cloth bags can be heperated, and I just cut the necessary um, metal bag holder. I just I just cut the the cardboard here. This is just cardboard on these things, and I just cut it. But the very observant will know. Uh, yeah, that doesn't really look secure at all, and it's not actually. This whole machine. The bag just sits in the holder like this, in these notches that you'll see. And then there's this, I upgraded this gasket. This gasket was very, very old. I just took um, a clean, brand new toilet gasket. That's what this is. Put it right there. It fit perfectly, actually. It was the exact diameter I needed. And what happens is all of this lines up. Well, if I close it correctly, all of it. All of it lines up, and when you turn the machine on, it creates a vacuum. Watch this lid. I'm going to close the lid with this latch, but watch the lid when I turn on the machine. <laughs> you see that? The whole lid compresses down. So that's how the bag seals, and um, it was pretty leaky when I first got it. I actually added some additional gasketing on the lid itself, in addition to this new you know, gasket I put around the, the hose um, hole. So yeah, pretty leaky. Would I use this to clean my house? No. Uh, but it's very good at, you close it up, you take it by its handle, and you walk out, and I clean my truck with it. You know, I get out there, and vroom vroom, clean the, uh, the truck. So that's what it's good for. I wouldn't use it for more than that. Um, but there's modifications, very simple modifications, just some gasketing, some sealing, and using a, a simplicity Ricker bag, Ricker, Ricker bag. And uh, yeah, the machine still, Cleans. Next up, beautiful blue Kirby Tradition. This I call the beast. Uh, that's because, ooh, yeah, you get a workout pulling this thing around. Could you take this outside and clean your car with it? Yes, it has hose attachments and everything. It's just not comfortable. It's, it's heavy. It's heavy. Um, it's also very, very heavy when it makes a complete seal with the carpet. I'll show that again. I think some people have seen this, but... Um... seal on the carpet, but you got to put some umph into it. This is not grandma's machine. It, I would never wish this on anybody's grandma. Now the very observant will notice that I'm probably getting some additional sealing on the carpet because I made a modification to this. So I'm going through each of the modifications of these machines. And the observant will pick up on the pitch of the fan in this. I did not change out the fan. What I did is I set this machine to always work in high mode, even with carpet. I added this little tab here. This tab depresses the Tradition's speed selector or speed switch. It's also a safety switch. It can be called either. It doesn't allow the machine to be turned on if there's nothing depressing this little switch here. But the switch also selects the speed. And uh, the speed is not selectable externally from the switch. 
uh, like newer, newer curbings do. So I modified this. So when I'm cleaning carpets with this, fan is spinning higher. I wanted maximum airflow from this machine. So that's what I got. I didn't want just the maximum airflow only when the hose is attached. And man, oh man, this thing, if I really want my carpets, I have a dog. If I really want the dog hair out of my carpets, this is my go-to machine. Uh, I also modified it. This is Kirby's first machine. A lot of you know first machine that had uh, disposable bags. But I modified it. Look at this paper. It's in my way. Sorry. I modified this. You can look at other YouTubers. My modification is a little bit different. I did not take the Heritage fill tube. And I know people are going to be like, why did you do that? Because the, the tradition fill tube is narrower. I know that. But I didn't want to be drilling and everything. So all I did was I, let me see if I can show you this. I put two plumbing reducers to reduce the new uh, Kirby bag uh, adapter with the narrower tube. And I know, I know it's narrower. Even though this fill tube is the original fill tube for the tradition, it is just enormous in its cleaning ability. Uh, so I can use the, this is the green Micron Magic from Kirby, and I can use their cloth HEPA filters in this now. So, yeah, I basically have upgraded it away from the horrible paper bags that it used to use. And um, it is just a beast of a cleaning machine. It really is. I also use this to renovate my rugs. Uh, I, I do have the Kirby Rug Renovator. I do not shampoo with it. Um, I just renovate, you know, if your carpet gets smushed down, rug renovator. That's the beast. Now for the practical Electrolux Super J. This is the machine that's really my daily driver. And I made several modifications to it because this thing gets a lot of heat. Um, not literally. But there's this an ongoing debate, not just the canister versus upright and clean and dirty fans, but the debate that these machines are dirty, that they themselves are you know, spewing all kinds of dust and everything. So let me show you what I did, because I told people I did this, and, and um, some people said that they wanted to know how I did it. So the basic complaint on this machine, let me move this out of the way, is that it spews uh, the, the claim is that it spews carbon dust. Well, let me show you something. See the dark? This is the exhaust hole. What you would use if you were blowing out. You would attach the hose here. You can see how dark it is. That is because I have added an exhaust filter to this machine. This is my newest machine, but back then they did not have exhaust filters. Let me show you how this works. It's very simple, very straightforward, and I highly recommend it. I took the machine completely apart, and it was pretty dusty inside. And the, the biggest dust I saw was this kind of blackish, grayish particle dust. And that's what I saw everywhere, and I just thought that maybe, I don't know what the previous owner had done. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the top of the Electrolux off. It just pops off. And you'll see I have taped a filter. That was the power button. It just falls off. I've taped the exhaust over. That is a, a helper fil a HEPA filter. Uh, it's not necessary to use a HEPA filter, um, but that's what I put on there and I taped it. Now the tape is not going to actually keep it there. The tape just keeps it in position. What actually keeps it in position is the pressure of these gaskets that I added to the top. These gaskets put pressure on the edge of this filter so that when the exhaust blows out, it keeps that filter you know, compressed enough against um, the, the surface of the top to seal it. So it seals this filter fully down. And you can see that working pretty good. I mean, it's, it's mostly a circular dust area, but there is some, some little bit of dust getting up here, but it's mostly that area. 
that's it. This is like window gasketing. Some people who are familiar with winterization use that. And this is just a standard um, HEPA filter that you can find on any vacuum store. Now you could, I'm not saying you have to use HEPA, because if you think about it, this dust is pretty large particles, maybe 2.5. Uh, the, the particle measures have these different sizes. This is pretty large. And previously I had made, I'm looking for it. I thought I'd put it out here. Anyway, I don't have it with me. Um, I had just cut out a furnace filter, like a MERV 7 furnace filter, and I taped that on here. And you have to cut it, and sometimes that gets a little bit messy. So that's why this size to vacuum filter was just perfect. Now, uh, this is due for changing. I need to change this. But once you change it, all you do is you fit the top back on. Put your screws back in. A little weird that Electrolux for this top, they have two flat heads and one Phillips. A little weird. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm not trying to get into a debate about whether these machines are clean or dirty. I'm just saying if you are concerned about it, there is a modification, like this modification, to, you know, as insurance, if you want to see. And I think the blackness of the exhaust is, is a decent indicator that there is some... Oh, shoot, I didn't put the button back in. i got to take it apart. It's a pretty decent indicator that there is some darkness going on. And why is that? Well, any of us who've worked on these electric motors... No, the brushes on these electric motors are ginormous. I've worked on all of the electric motors here, and the, the, the brushes on the, the Electrolux, the Super J, are just giant. I mean, wow. I mean, I don't want to accuse Electrolux of over-engineering, over but um, that is probably, you know, maybe someone would know, but that's probably one reason why uh, there is so much carbon dust coming out of this. It's those brushes are just, you know, massive. Or maybe it's the way the brushes are touching the surface area, who knows. Anyway, um, that's all it takes, is you, you take the top off, put in a new filter, and now you have a vintage HEPA exhaust vacuum that is excellent as my daily driver. That's all you do. Attach the hose. Go to the hose and you're ready to go. Now prices, some people may be wondering, you know, how much money did you spend on this stuff? These are all secondhand finds, local, local. Uh, like a Goodwill or Habitat Humanity Restore. That's where all these machines came from. This one, uh, the Electrolux Super J, all of it came together including the power nozzle, the beautiful aluminum power nozzle. All of this was just sitting in a box. I think it said 18 bucks, is what it said. All of it. Fully functional. The modifications I made were just to improve it and clean it up. Tradition. Came with the rug renovator, its attachments. Um, this was $20 at a secondhand store. And uh, the modification for getting the HEPA filters in the bag, it was five, ten dollars. The Hoover was uh, twenty-five dollars, and it, I didn't really actually know what in the world this machine was because I didn't know how to actually work it uh, to even open the box. It was, we were both trying to figure out how to open the box when I looked at it. This was uh, twenty-five bucks. Um, and it is missing one attachment, but the only thing it took was some cheap uh, simplicity bags and some, some gaskets. That's it. And then uh, the original 561 Oldie Goldie Kirby, this was $10. Um, it came with all these attachments, the hose, the floor, 10 bucks. So, you know, I'm spending less than $100. And I have multiple machines that serve their purposes. If I were to recommend one to purchase that does basically everything, that you can do basically everything, it would have to be the Electrolux Super J from the 1980s. And again, 
I'm not anti-Kirby. I'm not trying to push canister over uprights. I got them all. I'm just saying, based on ease of use, based on you know, how it sounds, again, this is the quietest. It's pretty light. I know some people say these are super heavy and annoying to move around. I've never experienced that. They are, I think, good machines. If you have hardwood or tile, I would definitely do something about your hard surface floor nozzles, for sure. Don't be scraping up your, uh, your floors just because your manufacturer doesn't have a good floor nozzle. All right, that's it, folks. Justin signing off. I hope someone enjoyed this and found this beneficial. And I am going to leave you with some vacuuming of my favorite one. We'll get the floor attachment on. Bye.